This is our ROI cabmate system. Uh, kind of a, a breakdown of uh, what's, what's included in this system that's uh, different from a standard system. Uh, we have sensors mounted on the cab, uh, an accelerometer and a position sensor, uh, which give a indication of the, uh, the motion of the cab and the suspension uh, and feed that information into uh, an electronic control unit, or ECU, which then command the uh, shock absorber uh, to a, either a very soft setting or a very stiff setting, depending on conditions. And this all happens uh, hundreds of times per second. So you're, the, the suspension is constantly giving the optimal ride for that particular event, that particular instant. Uh, the other thing the system does, rather than using a height control valve, which fills an exhaust in uh, kind of wastes some amount of air uh, in response to suspension motion. Uh, we use this position sensor and solenoid valves uh, so that we are only responding to changes in cab load or small air leaks that may be present in the truck. So by doing that we save uh, compressor runtime and just overall air consumption is, is reduced. Our uh, ECU is looking to make a correction every 200, or excuse me, 200 times per second. Uh, the overall response of the entire system is, is on the order of uh, 50 times per second. So we're able to very quickly respond to any event that's happening and uh, really stop it before it gets uh, any significant magnitude. A lot of the uh, uh, test vehicles or the, the fleet vehicles are team drives and uh, uh, we're, we're hearing that uh, occupants sleeping in the, in the bunk are able to uh, get better sleep. Um, we're hearing uh, greater wind stability. Bridge transitions are, are much smoother, much more stable. Uh, a, lot, a lot of good feedback like that, just rough roads in general or, or any transition from on to off highways is, is greatly improved. So this is the Cabmate ROI system, uh, our field, one of our field evaluation units installed on a Peterbilt 389. Uh, there's, we can go over the components. Uh, here you can see the semi-active damper. Uh, that's, so that's controlled electrically by our controller, which is mounted inside the cab in, in this uh, instance. Um, so we have two sensors on this truck that, uh, that the control system is acting on. One is the accelerometer mounted to the cab, as you can see here. Another is the position sensor, which is mounted behind the shock absorber. You probably can't see. Uh, but based on those two signals, the uh, shock gets stiffer or softer uh, very quickly to, uh, to keep disturbances to a minimum. <clears throat> the position sensor also acts to, uh, to control the height of, of the air spring. Uh, so rather than ex filling and exhausting all the time like a, like a height control valve would do, it looks for long-term changes in, in the height of, of the air spring and then, and then uh, turns on either the fill or exhaust solenoid valve. Uh, so you're able to see all the components here because this was an earlier prototype version. In production, all of those components, with the exception of the shock absorbers, will be inside of an enclosure. Um, uh, so it'll be a, a bolt-on option with four wires uh, running into the cab, power, ground, uh, and then uh, can high and low. Uh, so, so very simple to install, uh, clean, really plug-and-play operation. So. I'm Joel Morrow, Head of Research and Development with Ploger Transportation. I'm also the senior driver um, here to talk about the cabmate ROI. Uh, it's a system I'm having retrofitted right now onto my new Mac Anthem. I also have a system currently in service on a Volvo VNR. Um, we put these truck on two different trucks that have two completely different duty cycles to kind of gauge the benefit. Um, my personal truck, uh, I'm an everyday driver. I run all 48 states. Uh, generally lighter loads, um, a lot of specialty furniture, furniture deliveries. Um, 
typical backhauls though can be anything from rolls of paper to roofing shingles to to styrofoam packing material. So weights are all over the board on my backhauls. Um, my stepson in the VNR, he has a dedicated uh, regional route, um, mostly in the Midwest. He does do some East Coast deliveries. It's multiple stop deliveries. He uh, He's downtown Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, Baltimore, um, into the boroughs in New York City on occasion. So a lot of very rough, pounding, demanding roads. Um, Weights start out generally in the 65 to 68,000 pound gross combination vehicle uh, range. Uh, and then it's descending type loads from there as he makes multiple stops and deliveries along the route. He also does backhauls on occasion um, with a similar, you know, could be anything coming back. Uh, the big advantage that we see to this system is number one, it's, it's driver quality of life. Um, definitely rides better than the standard suspension as it's dynamic and can adjust to different road conditions. Can also adjust to different tandem positions on the trailer actually where you get the dynamic whip from the trailer bouncing up and down. It, it, it will it'll take uh, sensor readings and, and can adjust for that. Um, also for, for wind shear, side, side wind running out across Wyoming, Nebraska, Utah, Nevada, where you catch a lot of that very strong side winds and you kind of have that death grip on the steering wheel, the cab's leaning over, this will compensate for, for that. Um, from the fleet standpoint though, is how do you cost justify something like this? And we're looking at it as a fuel efficiency play and a productivity play, um, mostly because we can optimize the wheelbase of the tractor. Uh, as we shrink it up and maintain ride quality of the longer wheelbase tractors, we can optimize the tractor trailer gap for increased fuel efficiency. Also today with uh, ELDs, uh, productivity is paramount. Get a long wheelbase tractor off the main highway and try to get into some of these tight docks or even parking in a truck stop um, becomes very difficult. So optimizing wheelbase in, in that regard, it's a productivity play as well. So we're addressing two of the major expenses. Um, fuel is always one of the major costs for fleets and then maintaining productivity, it's very important to us and this will help us optimize our tractor spec and, and enable us to do both at the same time. No real compromises here. We're, we're improving driver quality of life. We're improving fuel efficiency and productivity all at the same time. So it's an exciting product for us.